Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going to do a continuation of my reading of Seven Pillars of Wisdom by T.E. Lawrence. This is the book upon which the movie Lawrence of Arabia is based. And uh, this will be a very short reading from chapter one. Uh, and it's only going to be the first three paragraphs of the book. Uh, what I'm doing is cherry picking a little bit to demonstrate to my audience the uh, depth of depth and beauty of the prose of T.E. Lawrence. Um, very few people can write this way anymore. And, uh, and to encourage you to pick up a copy of the book and read it for yourself. It's much it has much more texture in it than the movie Lawrence of Arabia, although uh, you will certainly recognize the movie in the book or the book in the movie. So these three, three paragraphs that I'm going to read today are from chapter one. And I won't be taking any YouTube comments until the end. I'll consider comments or questions at the end. Chapter one. Some of the evil of my tale may have been inherent in our circumstances. For years we lived anyhow with one another in the naked desert under the indifferent heaven. By day the hot sun fermented us and we were dizzied by the beating wind. At night, we were stained by dew and shamed into pettiness by the innumerable silences of stars. We were a self-centered army without parade or gesture, devoted to freedom, the second of man's creeds, a purpose so ravenous that it devoured all of our strength, a hope so transcendent that our earlier ambitions faded in its glare. As time went by, our need to fight for the ideal increased to an unquestioning possession. Riding with spur and rein over our doubts, I'll read that sentence again. As time went by, as time went by, our need to fight for our, the ideal increased to an unquestioning possession, riding with spur and rein over our doubts. Willy-nilly, it became a faith. We had sold ourselves into its slavery, manacled, manacled ourselves together in its chain gang, bowed ourselves to serve its holiness with all good and ill content. The mentality of ordinary human slaves is terrible. They have lost the world. And we had surrendered, not body alone, but soul to the overmastering greed of victory. By our own act, we were drained of morality, of volition, of responsibility, like dead leaves in the wind. The everlasting battle stripped the everlasting battle stripped from us care of our own lives or of others. We had ropes about our necks, and on our heads prices were showed that the enemy intended hideous tortures for us if we were caught. Each day some of us passed, and the living knew themselves just sentient puppets on God's stage. Indeed, our taskmaster was merciless, merciless. So long as we, as our bruised feet could stagger forward on the mad, uh, I'm sorry, on the road. Our taskmaster, our taskmaster was merciless, merciless. So long as our bruised feet could stagger forward on the road. The weak envied those who tired enough to die, for success looked so remote and failure a near and certain, if sharp, release from toil. 
we lived we lived always in the stretch or sag of nerves either on the crest or in the trough of waves of feeling this impotency was bitter to us and made us live only for the seen horizon reckless with reckless what spite we inflicted and endured since physical sensation showed itself meanly transient gusts of cruelty perversions lusts ran lightly over the surface without troubling us for the moral laws which had seemed to hedge about these silly accidents must be yet fainter words we had learned that there were pangs too sharp griefs too deep ecstasies too high for our finite selves to register when emotion reached this pitch the mind choked and memory went and memory went white till the circumstances were humdrum once again okay that's just a short reading but it's gives you a sense of getting into the book uh, i'll read some more substantive pieces tomorrow but i have a another live stream in a couple of hours so i'll have to end this now uh, so thank you for joining